And we welcome you into another edition of Off Pitch and get you ready for week 10 of the Premier League season, get you ready for a jam-packed weekend uh, of football and soccer, whatever you want to call it. And the two mats are here with you again, recording on the day that this will be posted. It's the first time for that change. happened. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if only we did it live, We, but you know. I don't like editing stuff, and I can't imagine doing the stuff I would need to put it on live, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, hello to you, Matt. Ah, yes, and hello to you. Happy Friday. <laughs> and uh, ready for a, a big weekend of tomato, tomato, football, soccer over the, <laughs> over the weekend, which has already begun as we were recording this. The Friday night game was wrapped up about half an hour ago, so we'll talk about that shortly after we've wrapped up what happened last week. Do you like tomatoes? No. I don't either. No. I don't either. But I, I, I like orange juice with pulp. Did you know that? Well, well there you go. This is where we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, let's not go down that rabbit hole. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, never did like tomatoes. And they do just the worst thing in the world here in the southeast of the United States, tomato and mayonnaise sandwiches. And I think, I, I think it should be a crime. Like you, you should be punished for doing that. Anyway, there are some parts closer to you. You put mayonnaise on French fries, and I don't get that. Yes, Belgium is big for Fritz and mayo. <laughs> Fritz and mayo, very good. We, see, we, we're an educational show as well. <laughs> on top of everything else we do. Okay, uh, week nine of the Premier League last season. Uh, last season, last weekend. Wait. Yeah. Mm. Uh, don't ask me to pick out what happened week nine of last season. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably an international break. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, okay. Last week started with the Merseyside Derby, and uh, a lot of people thought it would be one way traffic for Liverpool. It wasn't one way traffic, was it? Um, they had to wait, and Liverpool mm. fans got to the edge of their seats and gnawed on their uh, fingernails before they finally broke through with a Mohammed. Mohamed. Mohamed Salah penalty in the 75th minute, then scored again uh, to put it away in deep into extra time. 2 0 Liverpool over Everton. Yeah. 2 0 Liverpool. Um, stat- looks on paper as it was a solid home win, especially as Everton played with 10 men for all of the second half after Ashley Young got sent off uh, fire, you know, on the 37th minute. So, um, I. We said it would be a close last week on the show. We said it would be a tight game, but we thought Liverpool would probably edge it. And turns out that's ex- kind of exactly what happened in the end. And uh, after a little bit of a shaky start, Liverpool continued to roll on. So Liverpool, uh, again, they they play inconsistently, but I, mm. I keep saying they're good is really good. Uh, and of course, Salah's world class and. He gets Liverpool to a 2-0 win on Derby Day. Uh, Wolves won at Bournemouth 2-1. Brentford got a much-needed win at home over Burnley 3-0. Those two big wins for both Wolves and Brentford. Uh, Newcastle blew away Crystal Palace 4-0. More on Palace a little bit later. Anthony Gordon, Sean Longstaff, Callum Wilson, and Jacob Murphy, the goal scorers for Newcastle. Nottingham Forest and Luton ended 2-2. That's a big point for Luton. Yeah, I said, I think, last week, I think Luton could get something out of the game, and they came from behind with two goals in the last seven minutes to snatch a a very good point away from home at a, as you've said, organised and tough to break down Forest team because you've seen him a couple of times already yeah. this season and done the games on the network for us. Um, but yeah, a very good point for Luton while some of those other teams around them in the league dropped, or not dropped points, but didn't pick up anything. The, the Burnleys, Sheffield Uniteds and Bournemouths of this world. So a very decent point all ends up for Luton Town. Elijah Adebayo got the equaliser in the 92nd minute. I have not done Luton yet this year. I can't wait. I, they've got Liverpool coming to Kenilworth Road here sometime soon. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. I should have done the Chelsea game away at Chelsea, but uh, that didn't happen, unfortunately. But good to see them just picking up points here and there. And uh, the expected fall guys of the league this season going into it, yeah. how many you know, how many points were they going to get was the question. Well, they're doing themselves very well in that bargain at the moment. Yeah, they are. 
Man City, 2-1 at home over Brighton to snap that losing skid in the league. Uh, Julian Alvarez and Erling Holland scored in the first 20 minutes. I feel like they're always scoring two in the first 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brighton got one back late through Ansu Fati, but City breaks the losing streak 2-1. Bless their hearts. <laughs> yeah, after the two game, uh, two games on the spoon without a win, needed to come out. And as you say, they, they seem to be finding a habit of doing that, getting ahead, getting a couple early. Yeah. And then just cruising through the rest. And if they need to turn it up uh, late in games, then they have been doing that. And as we kind of keep saying, they've not even got out of third gear yet. They may they may find fourth at Old Trafford on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see if they uh, if they put United to the sword in the uh, in the derby. But um, uh, they had a good win again in Champions League in uh, midweek as well. So uh, after a couple of tricky weeks for City, they seem to be turning it around. Another one sent off for them. That's happened a couple times for them this yes. year. Manuel Akanji sent off uh, deep into stoppage time. Yeah, interesting that they've had as many sent off as they've had. Uh, get to the biggest game on Saturday, Chelsea and Arsenal. And boy, what a roller coaster here. I'm wearing the Chelsea colors uh, for this show for some reason. Uh Cole Palmer scored a 15th minute penalty to put Chelsea ahead. Then they got 2 0 ahead through Mikhailo Mudrik in the 48th minute on an accidental goal. <laughs> yeah. That's all you could say about that. Um, not the best from David Raya again, but Arsenal showing us uh, some really good resolve late. Declan Rice in the 77th, Leandro Trossar in the 84th to get them back to 2 2, and that is how it ended. Yeah, it could be a big point for Arsenal, actually. Um, the Mudrick goal, yeah, David Reyes scrambling backwards <laughs> as the ball went over his head just after half time. And then there was another goalkeeping mistake uh, from Sanchez, the Chelsea goal. He just gave the ball basically to Declan Rice. That was Arsenal's first shot on target of the whole game. And it was in the 77th minute. And then Trossard, the substitute, who'd not long been on the pitch, came on to snatch the equaliser. And they could have gone on and got another one after that late to win it. But, um, Chelsea held on, big point in the end for Arsenal, <clears throat> excuse me, but with other results not working out for them, we'll, we'll tell you about the table shortly, but um, they all need to win this weekend for certain to keep the pressure on. See, down here in these parts, we call these Duke colours and not Chelsea colours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other game, there was an even later game on Saturday, that was Manchester United and Sheffield United. Again, tricky waters for Manchester United to get through. Uh, Scott McTominay scored in the 28th minute. Six minutes later, they gave up an equalizer through an Oliver McBurney penalty, but it was a terrific strike from Dallow in the 77th minute that got Manchester United the three points, which they badly needed. Unlikely heroes at uh, (laughs) Old Trafford this week. We've had McTominay got those two against Brentford. Then he got another one this week, as you mentioned, and Dallow. In midweek in the Champions League, Harry Maguire scored a winning goal. And Anana, who's been under pressure, saved the penalty right at the end against Copenhagen to get them a Champions League win. A much-needed Champions League win at that. Um, so, yeah, the I wouldn't say the also rounds, but as I say the unlikely heroes are coming out of the woodwork for uh, Manchester United, of course, which was a pretty emotional day and game for the club after the uh, sad loss of Sir Bobby Charlton on Saturday last weekend. It was announced at half-time during the three o'clock kickoffs, and uh, yeah, the tributes have been flooding and flowing in from all corners of the footballing world since then. And there was a big celebration of uh, Sir Bobby's life at the Copenhagen game in the Champions League on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, that's a big win for Manchester United after uh, the loss of one of their absolute legends. So uh, one of the country's absolute legends, as uh, you yeah, well know. For sure. Yeah, there's a, there's a statue outside the ground of Dennis Law, George Best and Bobby Charlton. And unfortunately, and another of that trio uh, are with us now, unfortunately, which is a real shame. One game on Sunday, and I I found the scoreline surprising here. I don't know about you, but Aston Villa 4, West Ham United 1. Douglas Louise is the uh, golden boot hero we didn't think we needed in the Premier League. He's (laughs) going to try and run down Erling Haaland. He got two 
of the fourth of Villa and then put them ahead. Jared Bowen got one back for West Ham not long, so long after half time, but then Ollie Watkins, who's been playing very well and scoring a good lot of goals for Villa this season, got one and then Leon Bailey late on to just finish the job. But again, we said it last week, Villa are on the upward. Yeah. They keep getting wins and that was a good one against a, a very good West Ham team. Wonder if the uh, shine has fallen off the hammers a bit since their really good start. Yeah, that kind of carried over from the end of last season, didn't it, with the Europa Conference win. Um, did expect them to be in the bottom half of the mid table, if that makes sense, this season after you know a, a big big season last year, and it looks like they're falling into that bracket. Um, not sure who they've got actually this weekend. We'll get to the fixtures shortly, but they they will need a, after a couple of losses on the bounce day again. Another team that will be looking to try and turn the tide this weekend. That was the only game on Sunday. Then there was one game on Monday night, which uh, was top of the table, Tottenham hosting Fulham. And it was Spurs going through with a 2-0 win with Martin Tyler on the call, at least for us <laughs> stateside it was. Tremendous. Uh, Son, another goal. James Madison got the second half goal, 2-0 over Fulham. Yeah, and that put them uh, two points clear going out of last weekend's games. Pretty uh, solid win for Spurs. We said they shouldn't have a problem with Fulham and and didn't. And in a rare, uh, odd thing, which I did try to Google before the show and, and did, couldn't find an answer, when was the last time two consecutive Premier League games featured the same team? Yeah. Because they played on Monday, yeah. as you mentioned, at Fulham, and they've tonight played away at Palace. Uh, so very odd uh, situation for, of course, non-European football playing and now out of the Carabao Cup Tottenham, something to keep an eye on over the next few weeks. Um, yeah, odd situation that Tottenham are you know, back-to-back games in the Premier League without anyone playing in between. And uh, as they went on to a 2-0 win over Fulham, as you mentioned, they then turned right around and played earlier today on this Friday that we record this at Crystal Palace. And a 2-1 victory over Palace. An own goal off Joel Ward in the 53rd minute put Spurs 1-0 up. Son scored yet again in the 66th minute. Jordan Ayew got one back for Palace in uh, stoppage time. So Tottenham win their eighth of the season earlier today, 2-1 over Crystal Palace to get Week 10 started. And now at the current moment, the live standings, they (laughs) sound a lot this weekend, Maximum point st- games free. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> live standing show Tottenham uh, clear of Manchester City by five points. So it's Tottenham on 26 points, then City and Arsenal on 21. Liverpool sit fourth, six off the pace set by Tottenham. Aston Villa are fifth, Newcastle sixth, seventh Brighton, eighth Manchester United, ninth West Ham, tenth Chelsea, Bottom half of Palace, Wolves, Fulham, Brentford, Forest, Everton, Luton. Bottom three of Burnley, Bournemouth, and Sheffield United going into Week Ten Saturday. Yes, um, and as we mentioned, there, there's a few teams that will be looking and needing to get some wins. And there was a big celebration on the pitch actually at uh, Selhurst Park from the Tottenham players with the fans in the stands. You know, five, when were the last time Tottenham five points clear in the league? I know it's kind of you know, because everyone still got to play this week but they're they're pretty happy down there and ball is certainly going well who would have thought Tottenham were going to be a better team without Harry Kane man seriously it's unbelievable it really really (laughs) is Uh, a lot to get into this weekend so let's jump into it Saturday tomorrow as we record this Chelsea host Brentford that's the early game what do you think here yeah, that's the lunchtime kickoff for here in the UK. Uh, the morning game for you guys. Uh, sure, Chelsea getting better, and they played very well against Arsenal. Mm-hmm. I watched a good chunk of that game last week, and they did play very well. And we were two 0 up against the one of the favourites for the for the league title. Before it all went a bit wrong at the end, but should be a fairly e- well not easy, but a fairly good win for Chelsea. Brentford don't seem to be going that well away from home. I'm going to go 2-1 to the home side. 
Brentford took four points off of Chelsea in the league last season with a 2-0 win at Stamford Bridge and a 0-0 draw. Uh, at the... <laughs> That's what I just said completely. <laughs> <in the dark. laughs> and uh, so Chelsea looking for a bit of revenge on that. You're right. They are playing better. I don't... To kind of, I guess, piggyback off what I said with Liverpool, I don't quite know how good Chelsea's good is, yes. but you can tell they're playing better, which is exactly what you want to see. I think Chelsea will win this. Uh, I'll take them 2-0 over Brentford. Uh, Bournemouth Burnley uh, is one of two 10 a.m. Eastern time kickoffs on Saturday, followed by Arsenal and Sheffield United. Let's start with Bournemouth and Burnley. Uh, relegation fight six-pointer already in uh, October probably will end up a draw mm-hmm. uh, kind of things do uh, Bournemouth reeling off that defeat at home against Wolves last week I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one on this one they played in January in the FA Cup Burnley won at Bournemouth 4-2 I, I, I think I trust Burnley a little bit more you're probably right it'll end up in a draw but to pick a winner pick Burnley um, Bournemouth yeah. yet to get a win Two teams that aren't scoring goals. No, no, not at all. But watch, we'll get another six-goal game (laughs) from them like we did in January. (laughs) (laughs) Arsenal hosting Sheffield United. Uh, Yeah, good win again for Arsenal in the Champions League in the week. This should be more than a routine for the way that Arsenal are going Um, and and the way that Sheffield United, unfortunately for them, are going. I will take a 4-0 Arsenal win. Sheffield United should have gotten something from City. Played very well against United. Mm. I'm missing another one, am I not? Didn't Everton. they play? They should have got something against Everton. Who did they? Back. Yes, yes, that's the one. They, they, and 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 Tottenham. That's the one. Tottenham, oh, right. Tottenham scored two. Like what? Late. Very, very late. Yeah, both. Yeah. yeah, yeah, both were in stoppage time. That's the one. So Sheffield United. Then, then they got absolutely plowed by Newcastle 8 0. Holy Moses. Um, I'll take Arsenal. Hopefully, Sheffield United can uh, give us some excitement like they have against those uh, other big clubs. I will take Arsenal. You said 4 0. I'll go 4 0. Oh, yeah. uh, Wolves and Newcastle's on USRN Saturday afternoon. I don't know how many times USRN's been to Molyneux, but we are on Saturday. <laughs> Very good. What do you think about this? Uh, Newcastle got beaten by Dortmund on uh, Wednesday, I think that was. All the Champions League days of this week have kind of rolled into one. <laughs> but they did get beaten by Dortmund. And from what Alan Shearer, was, who was doing the five live commentary uh, for that game, has said on a podcast I listened to today, didn't really play that well, Newcastle. Although they did hit the bar twice late on. Um they will be, again, another team coming out swinging after that one and should be fairly routine for Newcastle. I will take a I will take a 3-1 to the away side. There's uh, there's the backstory of uh, Sandro Tonali. Of course, yeah. Banned for, what, 10 months, was it? I think it was. Um and I don't know how much you're able to get from what you're listening to and on Twitter and such, but a lot of that going on over here in the States too, with football, it, it, professional football, college football, NHL player just got suspended for half a season due to betting on games. Interesting one about the NHL player. He plays for the senators whose hmm. helmet sponsor is a, is a betting one of uh, the betting. Yeah. <laughs> So, ah, uh, is that has that ban actually gone? For, has he because he played? He came off the bench in the week. Yeah, I. I so, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's gone through yet or not. I haven't read you know, read into you know the ins and outs of it, but Let's I don't know if that's here. just he banned from playing in Italy because that's you know where the where it happened last season or, or what was going on there because it was him and a couple um, of others. FA has now confirmed Tonali's ten month ban has taken effect. Inning. Okay. So right. There it is. Um boy, we, we thought the sky was falling for wolves 
before the season. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, they played well. They beat, they beat City. They should have mm. beaten United. I, yeah. I, I'll go, I'll go one one right here. And they played well against Liverpool at home a few weeks back yeah. too. In the, yeah, that was an early kickoff that day, and they played well but got beaten. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I. We'll see how well they can play in this one. Real quick, let's step away from the Premier League because we also know what else is Saturday. Yeah. El Clasico. 10.15 a.m. Eastern time. 3.15. No, is is it 3? It, it is still 3.15. Yes, European costume Saturday. Saturday night. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Barcelona to host Real Madrid in El Clasico number whatever it is. <laughs> uh they're off to obviously really good starts. Real Madrid a little bit better than Barcelona. Do you have a feel for it? It's going to be interesting to see an El Clasico in the Olympic Stadium at Montjuic Park. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the new camp is under uh, is a building site at the moment as it's being ready for the start of next season. So it's going to be interesting. A stadium I have been to. Both <laughs> of them, actually. New, new camp and the Olympic Stadium at Montjuic wow. Park. Uh, which is... I can't imagine what they've done to the place to get it ready for football because when we went there a couple of years ago, it was it wasn't in any way ready to host anything. But uh, they they've got it ready and they're playing there already, and we've seen that. And interesting to see that up on the top of the hill there. Um, I tell it'll be the standard El Clasico. There'll be plenty of goals, maybe a red card, and Jude yeah. Bellingham will build the show for Real Madrid. Yes, it, it's set up for him, isn't it? Already the way he's been playing this season for both club and country. Put your house on Jude getting the winner on Saturday for Madrid. Yeah. We get uh, Ian Dark and Steve McManaman. On that nice. Here. Yes. Probably not on ABC because it's on a college football Saturday. Probably not even on ESPN for that matter. Probably ESPN Plus. Um, but yeah, that's who we get on it. We, we, um, must, um, we must mention quickly before we move on, Barcelona's winner, winner against Bilbao last Sunday. He'd been on the field 15 seconds, Mark Dewey, <laughs> the 17-year-old, and got the winning goal with his first touch in professional football. What a story. Yes. Yes, you brought that up on Sunday. By the inopportune time <laughs> while we were doing the cut race on yes. Sunday. That's yes, two out. seconds before the guy right behind you plowed in to the end of the pit wall. <laughs> 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 uh let's go to sunday uh no monday game this week so let's go to sunday for a five game slate starting at 9 a.m eastern interesting that you get a 9 a.m game on sunday then three 10 a.m's and then 1 11 30 let's start with that early game which is west ham hosting everton uh we just talked about West Ham struggling here the last couple of weeks we've talked all season about everton struggling i'm gonna go with probably a very boring nil-nil final. Uh, yeah, it's interesting what, that we've got a, a a one o'clock and then a half past three, the two telly games, they are West Ham Everton and then the Manchester Double, which we'll get to shortly on Sky on Sunday. Not really quite sure why the, the kickoff times have changed. There is a Rugby World Cup final on Sunday, uh, but what that would have anything to do with, I have no idea, because that's in Paris and it doesn't kick off till eight o'clock, I think. So that's a very strange way of doing it. Um, yes, truly, but I think it will be a drab. We know how West Ham play yes. uh, this season. They, they don't like having the ball, but they do pop up and <laughs> score a goal. Um, I, I will I will go with you on nil-nil, but I could also see West Ham nicking a one nil with having 5% possession. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's very interesting because Everton doesn't exactly look like a team that's going to hold 60% possession. No, that's true. <laughs> very true. So, that might be an interesting game to see who has the ball less. Uh, Aston Villa hosting Luton. We just talked about Aston Villa and they are really trending up. Luton starting to get some results. I wonder how interesting this might be at Villa Park. Short trip up motorway one for Luton to get to Birmingham to uh, face Aston Villa on Sunday. I said before how Villa have turned the tide, the tide after a slow start. I should think this should be an uh, the easy win. The Villa fans will be um, in full voice, I'm sure, on Sunday. And I will go... Luton do seem to be scoring 
not plenty of goals, but enough goals, it turns out, at the minute, Luton. Um, uh, again, after a bit of a slow start, I will go with a 2-1 to Villa. Interesting that you say Still that. Scoring, but I don't see them winning the game. That's a good segue. I'm glad you mentioned it, because so far this season in the league, Aston Villa has scored 23 goals. Luton has scored eight. Huh. <laughs> uh, I, I've got one more goal differential stat coming for you when we get a couple games uh, down. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is already. Yes. I'll go 3-1 Villa here. They are flying. Uh, certainly a game they cannot lose. I don't think they'll mess around no. very long. Mm. Brighton hosting Fulham in the middle of the day. Yeah, big win for Brighton on paper, but if you looked into it more in the week, you would realise that Ajax are absolutely terrible at the moment in the Dutch league. Managerless yes. Ajax. Yes. And uh, a big win for Brighton in the Euro- in the uh, Europa League 2-0 on Thursday. So the place will be jumping down there on the south coast on Sunday against a one of their perceived rivals, in Fulham, in terms of distance, uh, seem to be turning a corner after a couple of weeks of uh, draws and, and losses, Brighton. I will take them to win, and I will take them to win by two goals to nil. Let's see here. Uh, what do I they have on this game? They're fairly mid-table, though, aren't they? So they're in that kind of ballpark, too. Yeah, let, let's see what I have on this game. Last five times that these two have met in the Premier League, Brighton are winless. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Fulham beat them both times last season. Okay, that does enough for me. I'll pull the trigger. Fulham two one. Ooh, yeah. I like it when we, I like it when we don't agree on everything. <laughs> Makes for good radio. Doesn't happen that often, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out when it does. Makes for good radio, and then whatever this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> visual content. That's right. Thank you. Liverpool hosting Nottingham Forest. I doubt we'll disagree on this one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and again, I, I will continue to say I've seen a lot of Nottingham Forest this year and have been impressed. Mm. I think this is a step too far to ask of them here. Yeah, I watched a chunk of Liverpool last night uh, against Toulouse in the Europa League and they played very well uh, and rested a good bunch of players. The Sobers lie was one that was rested. Salah came off the bench and got a goal late on. Uh, 3-0 Liverpool. They should should breeze through this one without any problems. Yeah, I would think so. I would agree uh, with the exact score, actually. That's what I uh, had in my mind. 3-0 to Liverpool. All right, Manchester Derby, which is, of course, going to be on USRN Sunday, which leads straight into Martinsville. Um, a lot to dissect about this game. It's a it's a great derby. It's always a great occasion. Of course, City are terrific. United are whatever United are. Mm. Um, but uh, you mentioned you already know what is about to be said here. I sent it to both you and Seth earlier just uh, to empty the notebook here. Since Pep Guardiola joined Manchester City, which was, what, 2016, they have earned 142 more points in the league than Manchester United. They have won 59 more games in the league than Manchester United, and they have scored 226 more goals than Manchester United. Are you kidding me? It's an incredible stat. I mean, that's ridiculous. That, that, That is... Mind, but 226 goals in seven years. Holy cow. What is and that, United like 30 goals through, a season? And United have been through three managers in that time <laughs> as well. Yes. So, Manchester Derby number 191 on Sunday. Your thoughts about it uh, with City as heavy favorites at Old Trafford? Yeah. There will, again, to piggyback off my comments from before, the first league game, of course, this weekend since Bobby Charlton's passing last weekend at home for United because they were away at Sheffield United last week. The the Old Trafford faithful will obviously be up for it. But after five minutes, we'll see what United we get uh, with 
Eric Ten Hag's inconsistent side who struggled against FC Copenhagen in the week to a 1-0 just Henrik Larsson's son with the penalty miss, by the way, uh, the Celtic legend uh, at the end. But um, it should City will be disappointed if they don't win. Yeah. You would if it was a one all or two all, City will be disappointed if they don't win. Um but there'll be the, the flash points as there always is, and probably some VAR controversy because we haven't had that for the last couple of weeks. So that will I'm sure <laughs> pop up at some point over the weekend because it seems to have gone quiet for a little while. Um I take a city win. Free one. This is less than 200 days since they met at Wembley uh, in the FA Cup final. In the Cup final, yeah. Which uh, City won 2-1. I forgot City, that. City against United in the league last season. 6-3 win. 2-1 win at Old Trafford for United. Okay. Yes. That, That's well... <laughs> The the two heads of this show would take that again on Sunday, I'm I, sure. Yes. Real quick, because I just love asking questions like this. All-time top goal scorer in Manchester Derby history is who? Oh, wow. There's a question. <laughs> is he from the modern yes. era? Right, okay. Rooney? It is, yeah. 11. I was but... I don't remember him scoring too many against City. So, yeah, Ro- Rooney, wow, okay. Rooney with 11 goals in his lifetime against City. The most appearances by a player in the Derby is Ryan Giggs with 36. Yeah, it doesn't, surprise me. doesn't surprise me. So, yeah. and Of course, Rooney with one of his all-time, yeah. all-time goals oh. against City at uh, Old Trafford. Though they at, kick. at what a time, at what a place. Mm. Gotta love Peter Drury. <laughs> I think you'll be doing the you should be doing the game for Sky oh. on on Sunday. So yes, we'll have John Champion over here. Oh and well, there you go. You can't you lose guys, with those. Yeah, you guys will get him. Uh, so, I mean, th- this should be uh, on paper. Everything points to City, uh, and yeah. rather easily. It, it really does. Obviously, as you mentioned, the two of us hope for a little bit of resistance. Onana gives you zero confidence in much of anything. Him trying to stop Erling Holland or Phil Foden or Julian oh, Alvarez. Yeah. Yeah, Grealish. Yeah. Oh, yes, Grealish. Does anybody realize they're missing Kevin De Bruyne? <laughs> no, he's been a bit of a forgotten man, hasn't he? Over <laughs> his injury in that well, it was the first game, wasn't he? He went off yeah. against Burnley, injured, yeah. and uh, after being kind of rushed back a little bit prematurely by the sound of things. But yeah, they're not missing him, are they? The way they're going at the moment. By the way, just to clean that up, Peter Drury, we get him over here on Wolves Newcastle on Saturday. Okay. Then he'll, okay. Then he'll jet down to Old Trafford or up. Okay, well, poor form, I should think, doing that game for Sky. So anyhow, we'll have uh, we'll have United and City on USR on Sunday. I'm going to go City. D- d- will United get a goal? Yes, in this game, probably yes. I okay. should think they'll score. But so, if it, the way it's going, as we said in the recent weeks, it'll come off from <laughs> someone completely unexpected, <laughs> from probably off their ass if uh, <laughs> the way things are going for, for United at the moment. But we'll see. Johnny Evans, maybe. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> he had one against Burnley, which then got ruled off <laughs> for uh, offside or push or something. But yeah, uh, yeah we'll so, see. So. Three one, I I guess. Yeah. What That's I'll what go I with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Anything else stick out in your mind that you, or anything you want to get off your chest in the last ninety seconds of this show? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh I think we've covered everything from the weekend. The Real Madrid uh Barcelona game will be uh must see. If you don't watch any other game over the weekend, then that one's gonna be the one you watch. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, enjoy your Premier League weekend and your El Clasico weekend and your Manchester Derby weekend. Enjoy it all. Hope you'll uh, enjoy it with us. Again, Newcastle and Wolves Saturday on USRN, then City and United Sunday on USRN. 
which of course uh, each game leads into a race at Martinsville <laughs> on both days. Molyneux to Martinsville and Manchester to Martinsville. <laughs> of course, of course. All the M's. All right, be sure to like, subscribe, and do all, all of that. Push all the buttons. Hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, enjoy your weekend, everybody. We certainly will, and we'll be back next week. Goodbye. Thank you for watching USRN on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more USRN highlights and for even more dedicated coverage. Follow USRN and USRN2 on Mixlet.com and, of course, at USRN Radio on Twitter.